Thank you for staying with us on G Factor on Ben TV. We're with Dr. Margie Smith. We've got Joe here and Simone. What about the the body clock, Jean? Let's talk about that. Yeah, in terms of relationship, because I think that's yeah, really interesting. Yeah, we always want to know about it. Yeah. yeah, so it seems kind of weird, doesn't it? That we've got this body clock, but body clocks make us wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night, and they interact with our sunlight. So some people can get a bit flat if they don't get enough sunlight. You hear people in the winter time going, "Oh, I hate the winter." <laughs> Always feel a bit low, and they're off to Queensland for a holiday for a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the, so there, so there are people who are programmed with their genes to be the night owl or the mm. lark. So mm. probably one of the worst combos you can have is a night owl or a lark, mm. especially in relationship, <laughs> because <laughs> one's wanting to sit up late and the other one's wanting to go to bed early and wake up early. So mm. Um, mm. you know, you've got to make sure that those uh, body clock, be compatible. body clock genes are you know, in sync. And, and you know, the other thing is sleep is so important for our brain health. You know, your brain mm. needs to basically clear out all of the, uh, the chemicals uh, overnight. Uh, basically, you know, rubits we pee out in the morning is all those leftover chemicals from our brain in the morning. So um, I have lots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lots of brain activity, Joe. Yes, so. correct. <laughs> So it's really important. I mean, and these clock genes, uh, they can um, also affect people in terms of how much social activity they want. Which if you've got really a, a variant in one of those genes, then mm. you uh, may have low levels of social activity, which means you really don't want to socialise a lot. Quite interesting, because in your younger days, you have that social activity, you want mm. that. But as you get older, you'd rather just sit at home and watch, watch TV, TV and have a cup of hot chocolate. Yeah, but if, are you doing that with someone else? If you're doing it with someone else, that's great. But mm. human beings don't actually age very well if they don't have social activity. We know that people age a whole lot better when they have uh, social activity. They've got networks and friends. Mm. Uh, human beings are designed to operate in communities. Uh, so if you want to age well, be part of a community or join a sports club, um, find other people with common interests so that uh, you know you well, can, you can age a lot better. Now what I'm fascinated in because I've got poor detoxification pathways is that detoxification like you know I've had to change my life dramatically by you know removing all chemicals from the house and putting on my body so I, I, don't, I don't wear deodorant that's got all those, the um, what aluminium, what's it? aluminium, aluminium yeah. in it, and mm. I use organic hair shampoo, and it's not as good, mm. but mm. it's better because for my body. Yeah, so some people detoxify their environment so much better than others, but I think probably the, the most important aspect that we need to talk about is you know, pre-polluted babies. Our environment is so toxic these days that when mums are pregnant, Basically, what they are sampling from the environment, so too is their baby, their unborn child, mm. and uh, it's it's getting worse and worse. So you know, to put uh, cord blood, you can actually see the environmental load or the toxins uh, in those samples. And you know, what we what we now know is that uh, well, you know, in Buddhist terms, talking about becoming one mm -hmm. with our environment. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually what's happening. Our DNA is basically uh, full of debris. These environmental toxins are caught up in that twisted double helix. So in between those little rungs of the DNA ladder, mm. environmental toxins uh, insert themselves. Now, you know, human beings are pretty amazing. We've got these uh, two main enzymes that come along and they're a bit like roadworks, uh, you know, the council roadworks. Uh, one of them comes along and goes, oh, there's something uh, bulging out of the DNA here. We need to repair that. So it puts a flag there. So that's its job. It sticks a flag in the, in the DNA. And then the one that uh, does the actual roadwork repair, it comes along and goes, oh, there's a flag there. I'm going to cut out this piece and uh, we'll repair the DNA. Environmental toxins are very clever. What they do is they lock down the DNA, so they alter the shape of the helix a little bit. So the guy with the flag doesn't see the toxin, mm. or it can't get the flag in, mm. so it doesn't get marked for repair. So what happens is our DNA makes copies of itself. Mm. So you then replicate these genetic lesions or environmental toxins. Oh goodness. Another thing I'm fascinated with is vitamin D, because that's a biggie. You know, we've been 
trying to think slip, slop, slap, mm -hmm. but there's actually some really interesting so science. So vitamin D. Sunlight, yeah, right. that's right. It's the best source. Yeah, yeah sunlight's a really good source. Certain uh, nutrients are really good to help with vitamin D. But when we look at the vitamin D pathway, uh, some people, when they're out in the sun, don't actually get good conversion. So we rely on sunlight to hit our skin. That's the first part of the pathway. So I've had people say to me, I couldn't possibly have vitamin D insufficiency. I'm a courier driver, I'm out in the sun, I'm a postie, you know, I, I'm in the sun all day. I can't, I can't have low levels of vitamin D. And lo and behold, they do, because their processing pathway is faulty. So some of the genes involved in that pathway are faulty. And vitamin D is so important for mental health, cardiovascular health, weight loss, it's part of our immune response. So, you know, really hugely important. And so many people have low levels of vitamin D. So Slip Slop Slap has been, you know, I think it's important, but I think also that people are really too vigilant on it and we're just not getting enough vitamin D. So yeah. low levels are not good at all. Salt. Salt. <laughs> salt. 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 So hypertension. So um, have, you, have you even seen uh, Kitty Flanagan's latest uh, routine where oh, she's got her grandparents over for dinner and she cooks them dinner and no sooner has she got the plates on the table then they're saying where's the salt <laughs> and Kitty's called it cocaine for the elderly. <laughs> so you know, you know too much um, <laughs> Too much uh, salt or sodium uh, is bad for us and it can lead to hypertension for some people. So the most important thing is to get a more natural form of salt. So you want a salt that's low in sodium, more potassium, magnesium, uh, which is much, much better. So it's more mm. natural, it's more attuned to our bodies. And interestingly, just a little aside, there was a study done in Finland over 10 years. They changed the composition of salt to a more natural salt. So even in, even in McDonald's in Finland, over that 10 year period, they had to use a natural salt. They reduced hypertension, uh, heart attack, stroke by 60% by changing mm. the composition of salt. Wow. So it's yeah. one very small thing that we can all do is mm. get a more natural salt. What sort of salt do you use, Joe? Sea salt. Sea salt. <laughs> sea I see salt. salt and I put it on my meal. <laughs> all of it. None of that, none of, none of that table salt. Yeah. So I, I actually had a, a practitioner uh, tell me that uh, she doesn't use Celtic sea salt. And mm. I said, why is that? And she said, ah, because birds poop in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I think she was using Murray River salt or something like that. So I'm not sure if that's true, but anyway. So would you would it be fair to say that you've cut salt out of your diet completely? I oh, know you don't have no. to cut yeah. salt Just out. We do need it. to have some, but it's the composition yeah. of that salt. So okay. a more natural salt. So those pink colored salt that you can buy in the supermarket, use yeah. that, but read the label because some companies have changed mm. horrible white table salt pink. Yeah. So if you don't yeah, read the salt. labels, you could be yeah. just using Pink so table tricky. salt. So but tricky. you've got to read the labels of everything now because there's high fat, saturated fats, high sugar, and high salt. Like everything's so toxic mm. now. Mm. Because they want to preserve things, they want food to taste good, they want yeah. our brains, reward circuitry. Remember, we talked yes. about that? To be to totally engaged and mm. just keep you doing repetitive things. Yeah. I mean, that's why people become sex addicts because it feels good. And they and they're, they get addicted. Like, they get addicted to it. me just then. I was just, <laughs> are you going with problem? this? Is that your problem? Do you think? Are you a sex addict? No, I'm a or are you an addict? There's love and there's sex. Yeah, I think you're. Do you go hand in hand? No, no, I think. Well, no, I don't, love think, love so. I don't be... think so. That might be. I think you're a sex addict. I think you're addicted well, to love. Thanks for that diagnosis. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, what do you think, doctor? <laughs> Do you think she's sex or love? What do you reckon? <laughs> oh, I think Joe's probably a mix of uh, really cool and uh, very loving. So. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so happy to have those in my jeans. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much for joining us on G Factor. Hope it was good for you as it was for us.